welcome to Bankleka, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cecilia and I work for Jotun. Today we are at Horten with Kongsberg, where they develop, test and produce the Jotun Hull Skater. The Jotun Hull Skater is part of Jotun's Hull Skating Solutions. And today you will get a sneak peek under the hood of the Hull Skater. But before we get to that, let's take one step back and look at what is happening in the industry today. Here we have Helle working for Jotun. Uh, Helle, can you tell me a little bit about the issues that the Jotun Health Skating Solutions can contribute to solve in the shipping industry today? Well, over the last decade, we have seen the maritime industry increasing their focus on sustainability. And the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, is serious in their quest to decarbonize the shipping industry. So reducing greenhouse gas emissions will be an important contribution from the maritime industry in the years to come. IMO is uh, encouraging transparency uh, and they have a steady route towards zero emissions through their decarbonisation trajectory and their new rules concerning EXI and CII. There is a lot of talk about EXI and CII. Can you explain what that means? Well, Cecilia, I'm very glad you asked that question because these rules are not the easiest to understand. So we have turned to DNV, um, the world's leading classification society and the advisor for the maritime industry to learn more about these rules. Per Marius, what are your thoughts when it comes to these new rules and what implication that has for the marine industry? We are observing that uh, different parties in the industry, um, and that covers charters, financiers, regulators, and regulators includes IMO, flags, port states, class, uh, and other parties, uh, are working hard now to establish uh, the, the needed uh, requirement to guide the uh, decarbonization. Uh, this is about uh, requirements, and it is about tools and measures to be able to uh, implement and enforce. Uh, what we also observe is that there is yet no full agreement between these parties. Everybody are heading uh, in the same direction, but it's not uh, yet come uh, together into, uh, uh, into a full set of requirements or a full set of uh, tools uh, to make it possible to implement. Uh, we in DNV, we are working with all these parties we have mentioned now to, to, to help implement, uh, put in place implementation uh, measures for uh, the requirements and we are working hard with the different parties to, uh, uh, to enable piloting and uh, of course uptake of technology in the industry. Uh, we think that uh, to get the things done instead of talking about it is extremely important at this point in uh, time. And uh, of course, the Hull Skater is uh, an example on a concrete action that can uh, give benefit uh, uh, quickly and uh, on board existing vessels. So uh, that is a, a perfect example on something that we like to support. What everyone is now eagerly awaiting is, of course, uh, the outcome of uh, the IMO MEPC meeting in June. Uh, uh, to see if we can get uh, further in uh, in harmonizing both uh, requirements and uh, and not least uh, methodologies and so on uh, to put this forward or to drive this forward. Thanks, Per Marius. You mentioned an IMO meeting. What are your hopes for that meeting? From the IMO MEPC meeting, we are hoping for clarification around uh, these uh, decarbonization trajectories. Uh, which uh, is actually what is asked uh, as requirement for the ships uh, on a timeline. In the shorter uh, time period uh, towards 2030, but maybe even more uh, importantly uh, beyond 2030 and, uh, 2030 and, and, and further into the future. Um, if we can get more clarification on this, uh, we will get closer to be able to say what is applicable ship by ship 
uh, and it will be much easier uh, to evaluate uh, evaluate the clearly the implication for ships. It will be easy for ship owners and everybody to to really understand uh, where this is heading. Um, MAPC uh, IMO is concentrating uh, mostly uh, on no on the time towards 2030. Uh, but we are eagerly hoping that they will also say something about uh, the way beyond. Because if you are planning new buildings or whatever today, uh, you need to look uh, far beyond 2030. And finally, uh, what IMO is providing is tools and methodologies uh, to measure, to investigate, verify, certify or whatever is needed uh, uh, around the requirements to really make the requirements come alive and so on. And uh, the results of this will benefit uh, everybody who is uh, working in this direction. So we are looking very much forward to uh, what is coming out, uh, say, by entry. Last question then, specifically when it comes to EEXI, what are the implications that you foresee for the marine industry? A lot of the focus now uh, uh, in the short term is about uh, the EEXI requirements. Uh, as we see it, uh, uh, most of the conventional tonnage will be able with reasonable means to deal with uh, these requirements. The uh, trajectories, if enforced, uh, that are likely to come in place will uh, represent a much, much bigger challenge, uh, uh, even in the, say, in the, in, in the first forthcoming five years or so. So uh, that's why we, uh, we are thinking that, um, that uh, the understanding about uh, the, the future of these trajectories is more important. Thank you, Per Marius. What a great overview. Hearing from the experts at DNV always sheds lights on areas that many find difficult and complex. I wonder, in the big scheme of things, will ship owners be able to commission new ships in the future without regarding environmental footprint? That's a very good question, Cecilia. And global financial institutions are actually one step ahead. We are talking with DNB, that's Norway's largest financial services group, to learn more about green financing in the shipping industry. So, Nina. How important is sustainability from a financial markets perspective? Well, over the past few years, we've definitely seen sustainability and, and perhaps even more so climate change rise to the top of many agendas. And it's very clear that if we are to reach a price agreement, large amounts of capital will need to be invested in a greener direction. So with capital comes both great responsibilities, but also great opportunities. And banks and investors, such as ourselves, are setting ambitious targets for reaching net zero emissions by 2050. And even if we are not 100% sure of what the road ahead will be to reach that target, it definitely has implications for the way we do business already today. This does not mean that we will only finance such activities and initiatives that are Paris in mind already today or that are very much only in the forefront. We still very much want to support those that are part of the transition, part of the solution. Because if we are to reach these climate targets, we definitely need to promote change, and especially in those sectors that are among the more challenging ones. Thank you. Can you give some examples with specific relevance to the shipping industry? Well, to promote change, I would say there's two important factors. We need transparency and we need cooperation. And one good example of this within the shipping space is the Poseidon Principles, where DNB is a founding member. And this was an initiative that started off with just four banks, then it grew to 11 at launch, and now it has actually grown to 25 banks. And here we have committed ourselves to report on the emissions in our shipping lending portfolios with the target of reducing these emissions in line with IMO targets. And unless we start with measuring and reporting, and we do it collectively, it will be very difficult to promote change. So, do you think green finance can help advance such developments? Uh, first of all, green financing means that the financing includes additional transparency around the sustainability credentials of the actual transaction. And this could, for example, be via green bonds or green loans, where the money is actually 
earmarked for specific investments, which it could, for example, be linked to reducing emissions or reducing the negative impact on, on biodiversity, just to mention a few examples. Uh, it could also be done via sustainability-linked financing, where the actual cost of the financing is linked to the sustainability performance of the borrower. It could, for example, be linked to reducing emissions. And if you outperform on your targets, you might get cheaper financing or vice versa. If you fail to reach your target, the, the financing can actually become more expensive, which then creates a very clear financial incentive for the borrower. And when looking at shipping, this could, for example, be linked to investments in very fuel efficient or even zero emission vessels. It could be for infrastructure supporting such vessels, or it could, of course, be for other types of enabling activities that will ensure a lower environmental impact or simply a higher environmental performance of a certain ship. And here, the Housegate is, of course, a very relevant example where using new technology in partnership and really finding new innovative technologies to increase the environmental performance in shipping. And as we see investors, they are definitely looking for sustainable investment alternatives. And this type of labels on financing, green and sustainability linked labels, they make it easier for investors to identify these types of investments. So in that sense, it can definitely help a company to acquire and sustain access to capital over time. Thank you, Nina. It seems to be a high level of involvement for many companies surrounding the shipping industry. But I can't help but think that this is a lot to deal with for ship owners and operators. I believe that the number of regulations and the complexity of reducing environmental footprint is a lot to take in for both owners and operators. And that's why we wanted to hear from our customers perspective. Let's listen to what Valenus Willemsen has to say about the, making the shipping industry more sustainable. The single biggest challenge we're facing is getting to zero emissions. That's what we face as an industry. From 2008 to 2018, we've been able to reduce the CO2 output by 32%. So that's a, that, that's a significant step. We've been able to achieve a lot of that through scale, um, but also technology in how we apply technology in the engine room and through energy management systems. But to be very frank, to get to zero emissions, that journey, it's going to require not tweaking, it's going to require quantum leaps. We, we can walk away from that business and say, you know what, it's, it's not doing the right thing for the planet, so, so let's leave it. But what value does that bring? So I think our perspective is very much about how, how do we take responsibility for what we do? We want to partner with others to meet this challenge. It's bigger than we are. This has to be a mass collaboration. Uh, the Getting to Zero Coalition is a terrific example of how industry can come together and pool our capabilities and pool our resources in order to find uh, the best solutions for sustainability for our businesses in the future. For centuries, ship owners have fought a battle with nature against seaweed and marine growth. Keeping a clean hull has been their number one priority. Coating technology have developed extensively over the past decades. And today, using an advanced anti-fouling can keep your hull clean for the entire dry docking interval, reducing fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. However, for ships in the most challenging operations, working under unpredictable operational parameters, no coating technology today can do the job alone. And that's why we have developed Jotun Hull Skating Solutions. We are combining state-of-the-art anti-fouling with robotics and big data to promise an always clean hull, even in the most challenging operations. So, what is Jotun Hull Skating Solutions? Let's have a look. A perfectly clean and smooth surface moves efficiently through water. Keeping any surface perfectly clean in demanding marine environments is, however, a huge challenge. If fouling is allowed to build up, 
it'll significantly impact performance. Never allowing fouling to get a proper grip is the key. Our newest invention is designed for just this purpose. Proactive cleaning will be a revolution in the market and ensure maximum hole efficiency for the most challenging operations. Jolton Hole Skating Solutions, the only solution that delivers an always clean hull for the most challenging operations. It provides ship owners with unlimited idle days, market-leading hull performance, and an improved environmental footprint. The revolutionary hole skater from Jotun is always on board the vessel. It's easy to operate and covers a large area in a short amount of time. Proactive cleaning ensures no settlement of fouling impacting the ship's performance and prevents transmission of invasive species. The hole skater is specially designed to work together with our coating without causing damage or erosion. Jotun Hole Skating Solutions is groundbreaking, and it guarantees an always clean hull. A clean hull is an efficient hull, which means less fuel consumption and lower emissions. Jotun Hole Skating Solutions provide ship owners with unlimited idle days market-leading hull performance, and an improved environmental footprint. Jotun Hull Skating Solutions. Always clean hull for the most challenging operations. Hull Skating Solutions is a solution for proactive cleaning of vessels keeping the ship fouling free in the most challenging conditions. But what does this proactive cleaning service look like when actually installed and operated on the vessel? Let's have a look. Developing a solution like this could not happen without extensive cooperation across industries and across the value chain. Jotun is a world leader in marine coatings and Kongsberg is a leading global technology company. And today we are here together to present hull skating solutions. And here is our hero at work. Kjell, 
Kongsberg Maritime have been the technology enabler in developing whole skating solutions. Can you tell us a bit more about what the, the main contribution is from Kongsberg? Yeah. Uh, Kongsberg Maritime now have supported Jotun in development of the robotic, but also development of the digital solutions where we have a remote control and a cloud data storage system. Kongsberg uh, have also driven the initialization process for the robotic, and that means we are building up the correct level of the product performance, but also for the product stability. We also have a complete manufacturing line here for Hull Skater. Kongsberg take also care of the technical service and support in operation. And today we're here at Kongsberg's premises at Banklöka. Uh, what takes pl place in this building? We are located in Horten and little south of Oslo. We have a complete uh, production line and test facilities here. Uh, we also have a development engineering group here, so we are very close to the manufacturing process, and that's very important for them. We're also standing next to a very big installation here, so uh, what is this and how do you use it? Uh, this installation here is for a skater ramp uh, for the hull skater. We are simulating the vessel's hull with curvature, with overhang, with the wells and the plate step. We also have a water tank so we can run the hull skater into that and do the underwater navigation system test there. Thank you, Kjell. And we do understand how important this rig is and how uh, important this whole location is. So we have also spoken to Christian. He is one of the engineers that has developed uh, the hull skater itself. So let us join him and take a look under the hood of the hull skater. So the hull skater itself is the onboard uh, skater or robot that performs the inspection and the cleaning mission of the vessel. The umbilical cable is connected to the hull skater. Here all the signals go through and from the electronic box, which handles all the control signals, the video feeds, which really communicates between the hull skater and the skate operator. It is connected to the skate operator's control center, and then by used in 4G connection, the skater together with its four built-in uh, cameras can remotely operate on and control the skater from any locations around the world. As we can see at the front bumper, it is cameras, one on each side and for the inspection cameras mid-under. It also attach lights so the skate operators are able to see where they are driving. And if you go in under the bumper, we can see the non-adhesive brush, which will remove the early stage of fouling without damaging any of the coating. To stick on and hold on to the hull, the skater is equipped with four custom-engineered wheels. So the skater itself weighs around 200 kilos, but each magnetic wheel has a holding force of approximately 300 kilos. From the testing, we can see that uh, by cleaning, we remove the, the biofouling, so the solution works as it intended to do. It's easy to be fascinated by the hull skater, but Jotun's hull skating solutions consist of much more than just the hull skater. With us today, we have Gerd Axel, our breakthrough director. Can you tell us a little bit more about the other elements of the hull skating solution? Well, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, the whole skating solution consists of three additional sort of main elements in addition to the whole skater. Uh, the first of these main elements is C Quantum Skate, a high performance uh, coating that has been optimized for use as a part of this whole skating uh, solution. Uh, a second main element is uh, predictive monitoring of the condition of the underwater hull. It's a, that's quite a tongue, tongue twister, but, but basically we in Jotun have been uh, collecting uh, AIS data uh, from the world fleet for several years now. Uh, this gives us uh, knowledge on the position, on the heading of the speed uh, and an export of coal for all ships in the world fleet at all times. And we now use this uh, data in combination with oceanographic data on the most important drivers of biofouling, uh, salinity, water temperature, water depth, etc., etc., and, and use this combination to predict what is the probability of fouling on the underwater hull at any point in time. 
the third element in the solution are our uh, technical service uh, teams. Uh, one of these teams consists of world-class people in uh, dry docks and new build yards uh, around the world uh, that help ensure that the coating is correctly applied and that the robotics uh, are properly installed on, on, uh, on the ships that they're in, intended to serve. A second part of this technical service uh, is uh, our full-time skate operators. It's a set of, of uh, full-time employees whose only responsibility is to do skate operations on ships when they are in ports or at anchorages around the world. And they do this from uh, remote operating centers located uh, in a handful of places around the world where one of these uh, centers is uh, right behind us here. So part of the technical service is operating the whole skater. This is done by Jotun skate operators who are available for missions 24-7 around the world. Let's listen to Fredrik, who is leading the skate operations team, to learn more about how they operate. My responsibility is to be the link between the vessel and Jotun. So I have direct contact with the vessel, usually once a month or every other week. We are not only the ones that um, clean the vessel, we are also the ones that have the greatest communication with our clients, the direct clients. So when we get a new vessel, uh, one of the first things we do as a skate operator is to make a driving pattern for our inspections. And this is always customized to each vessel, making sure that we have a full control of how will the hull actually look like. We start the operation by connecting to the vessel and especially our skate operator assistant on board to establish communication with the skate operator and then we together we bring everything out to the railing and from there we do a pre-dive which is a check of the system that everything is working as intended and then uh, we launch the skater I meaning we drive down the hole down to the water line and from there we start our inspection or proactive cleaning operation uh, it's my responsibility towards our clients to give them a good understanding of their ship state. So we've done operations from Norway, here in Norway, and the vessel has been in New Zealand, Singapore, uh, US. So on board every vessel we have a small router or a modem that connects to the uh, 4G network in said port. And we are actually connecting through a Kongsberg network, which is completely safe and encrypted and it's only us that can uh, get connection to the vessel. It's not only me here in Norway that's a skate operator. We have uh, skate operators in Korea, we have skate operators in um, Singapore. And we're also opening some more hubs now, we're looking for more skate operators. And the idea is that we have a follow the sun mentality, that we always have a skate operator that's ready to do an operation. Keeping the hull clean is uh, very high priority for ship owners. So now you probably wonder, what does it actually look like when the whole skater is operating out in the world? We have collected some real life footage of inspection and proactive cleaning mission. Let's have a look. As earlier mentioned, partnerships have been necessary to develop a solution like Jotun Hull Skating Solutions. But Jotun and Kongsberg Maritime are not the only ones involved in this development. 
It's been a pleasure and a privilege to work with our partners Semcon, DNV, Telenor and Valenius Wilhelmsen, all leading companies within their fields. So, let's listen to what all our partners have to say about this cooperation. Fouling, or biofouling as we call it, that has a big impact. Fouled uh, holes today represent probably on average 20 to 30 percent inefficiency uh, in the fuel consumption in shipping overall. And then there is also increased uh, attention from the so-called port authorities who are always threatened by the risk of having invasive aquatic species. So very often ship is stopped at, uh, outside the port saying that you have a dirty hull. You need to clean your hull before coming back in and that can be an extremely expensive process. This kind of partnership has become more and more important because you need to work together. There's a certain time to market. Um, the role around us is more and more competitive. So I think bringing different competences together and working as a team with different expertise is really the new way of working to, to be faster, more cost efficient, um, bring to the market soon enough. So the collaboration with Jotun uh, started back in uh, 2017 uh, where we had an invitation from Jotun to attend a very secret R&D project. When Jotun was uh, looking for a reliable technology partner uh, with uh, long experience within marine robotics, underwater sensors, uh, remote operations and a maritime service network, it was uh, natural uh, for them to look to Kongsberg Maritime. So I would say that our association with Jotun has started off as an advisor in their design and development. I think Jotun saw that Telenor has a global reach. We have a good history when it comes to the machine-to-machine -machine IoT scenarios. So we're able to provide that connectivity, which is important for the solution. And not only the connectivity, but also the security in protecting the data being transmitted to and from. And data is uh, the key word moving forward. Data management and data handling. Uh, and they uh, asked us whether we would offer one of our vessels as a test platform for this new technology, uh, which we happily kind of accepted. So we helped Jotun to fill in some of the technical gaps they had in terms of the ship type knowledge, the ship operations, the ship systems, and so on. Uh, so that partnership, this ecosystem has been also super fun to, uh, to work within. For any project to materialize, it is important that the stakeholders have, are on the same platform, so to speak. I think that the best part of working with Jotun has been that you're working with a professional player with a clear vision or direction. You want to create a system, uh, we want to um, uh, improve sustainability. So it, it has a bigger purpose. So uh, we have often heard about the Norwegian maritime cluster uh, and sometimes wonder what that is. Uh, in this case, we have seen this cluster in operation. Here we have the ability to work together with the technology leading uh, Norwegian companies within their own fields. We are delighted to partner with Jotun to develop such an innovative product, which will help a customer to make their business more sustainable and more efficient. And this is just a start, so I'm really excited about the potential going forward. So this, I think, is a fantastically interesting solution. Obviously, it has a, a global potential, and if we were able really to deploy this service broadly to ships across the world, we would have a huge environmental uh, benefit from, from this all of us. Jotun Hull Skating Solutions is developed to keep a clean hull in the most challenging operations. At the extreme, a ship can stay idle for 364 days and sail off with the clean hull on day 365. The solution is still in its final verification stage. Kjell, can you explain what that means? Yeah. That means that we have to verify the solution technically and commercially and also operationally. And we also, it's very important to working with carefully selected customers and vessels to verify one type uh, vessel at a time. And Helle, what are the key benefits for the early adopters of hull skating solutions? Well, Cecilia, you mentioned it earlier. So first and foremost, Jotun Hull Skating Solutions is providing full operational flexibility with unlimited idle days. And 
Promising an always clean hull means that this will reduce fuel consumption, which again will reduce fuel costs and CO2 emissions. And sailing with an always clean hull will uh, minimize the risk of spreading uh, aquatic invasive species. Last but not least, hull skater on board the vessel at all times means that you have uh, inspection capabilities available at the vessel 24-7. Uh, Drawing the lines back to where we started today, Garaxel, how can hull skating solutions contribute to reduce environmental footprint, reduce fuel consumption and protect the investments needed for EEXI and CII? Thank you, Cecilia. That is also a very important uh, question. Uh, Biofouling on ships and underwater hulls is a problem in need of a solution. Uh, the IMO in the latest greenhouse gas emission report estimates that as much as 9% of the world fleet's fuel consumption is a direct consequence of biofouling on ships and underwater hulls. Uh, this amounts to uh, 85 million uh, tons of additional greenhouse gas emissions and 12 billion US dollars in excess fuel cost every year. Uh, for the part of the world fleet in the most challenging operations, th this challenge with biofouling is even greater. And we estimate that we can help uh, reduce a fuel co uh, cost or fuel consumption, cost and greenhouse gas emissions by as much as 16% in this part uh, of uh, the fleet. Uh, this energy efficiency gain uh, also will have a positive impact on the uh, carbon intensity rating uh, on the ships. Uh, very important uh, these days when the IMO is coming with new regulations and when banks and cargo owners are increasingly uh, focused on the energy efficiency of the ships that they provide financing for and the ships on which they transport their cargo. That sounds like a compelling value proposition. And, and, and again, you're right. Uh, today, more than ever, uh, keeping your underwater hull always clean uh, should be a no-brainer. And the best... Thank you, Ger Axel, Kjell and Helle. And a big thank you to everyone else who has contributed to our broadcast today. And a great thank you to everyone who has logged on to join us here today. We hope that we will see you all at Lillestrøm for Norshipping in January 2022.